And Allah says, now that happened, take a place of prayer from where the Maqam of Ibrahim is, the station of Ibrahim. And there's a bunch of other stuff. Um, and it says, I, we took a promise from Ibrahim and Ismail. There are two names you hear there, right? To purify this house. People, they go there for i'tikaf, right? That's what it is, the word of i'tikaf. You know what i'tikaf is? Someone explain what i'tikaf is. Chocolate? Come on, guys. If you don't talk, then it's going to get boring for me here. I'tikaf. Right? When you make an intention, you come there and you dedicate your, your time and place in a uh, place of worship. So one of the best places i'tikaf is Kaaba. Allah says, purify this house for those who do i'tikaf and do sajda and do, do ruku, right? Right there. Ruku and sajda. Do, do I... Taifin, those who do tawaf, akifin, ruku, sujood, i'tikaf, ruku, sujood, prayer, who gets worship. Purify this. And guess who did this? 10,000 years later, guess who did it? Who's your prophet? Who's your prophet? Yes. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The legacy of Ibrahim was fulfilled by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Did all this in the house because the house was corrupted, right? All the things around it, not he did all that. Okay, so keep that in mind, okay? Now, he got the mission, go build the house. He's like, okay. Ibrahim Alaihi Wasallam says, you asked me, Allah, to make this a peace, uh, this peaceful place. So I'm going to ask something else. The two words are highlighted there for a reason. And he's making the first du'a. This is a du'a we're going to spend a lot of time. He says, Ya Allah, Rabbi Jal hadha al-balada amina warzuq ahlahu minat thamarat. He's asking you two things. Here's what I, I'm really amazed. Here's what I'm really amazed about. Urban development, city development, what does it what are the things two things that you need? What are the two absolute essential things that you need to, to develop a city or a place or, or or a civilization? If you know that, then dude, I'm gonna give you the entire box of chocolate. What is it that you need? A Muslim community, yeah, that's exactly that. We need all of that everywhere. Two things, security, funding and security. That's exactly, exactly what he's asking. Amna means security. So imagine a place, imagine Pleasanton. Imagine Pleasanton. The securest place on face of the planet. There's no such thing, people don't even know what crime is. It's not even in a dictionary. They don't even know what crime is. In Pleasanton whatsoever, incredibly secure. But guess what? No one has a job. No one has money to spend. You just don't have any funds. You don't have anything. There's nothing for you to do. You're barely living because it's incredibly secure. Flip side, imagine Pleasanton is the richest community in the face of the planet. Everyone, everyone is driving, uh, what are they driving? Uh, what are they driving? Those exotic cars. $700,000 cars. All of them. Everyone is rich. Guess what? But there's no security whatsoever. Every single person is afraid of their life. They're going to get robbed. They're going to get mugged. They're going to get all those things. Any crime that you can imagine is existence. What is the use of that? So he's asking for those two things. Imagine this. As I said earlier on, he is about to build, resurrect the Kaaba, right? And he looks at left, right, this way, that way. All he sees is sand. Nothing else. There's no irrigation, there's no sand, there's no water, nothing. All he sees is sand. But the man has a vision. Incredible genius has a vision. And he's asking Allah, I see the sand. There's nothing impossible for you, God. Help, help this. Whoever is going to live on this earth in this area, help them with two things. Make him rich. You think that, that region is rich? That region is rich, man. They got lots of stuff there. And also I asked Allah for, uh, for security. Those two. What is the ahlahum in thamarati? Man amen minhum billahi. And then he adds one clause. Ibrahim alayhi salam adds a clause in here. Remember he said, he remembered from his, uh, the first conversation with God. He said, if I'm going to be the imam, which I am the imam, I'm the leader of the humanity. 
how about my progeny? Please help all of them to become imams and all of them become righteous. Allah said, no, no, no. My promise doesn't go to the wrongdoers. So he is modifying his dua here is saying, so give the peace and security and richness and all that to who? To man amana minhum billah wal yamal akhir. To the one who believe in you, O oh God, in Allah, and the one who believe in the last day. He puts this clause. He remembered that. He gets surprised by Allah's response again. Allah doesn't say you got it. Yes, Allah says this. And here's the second question for you. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَأَمَّتِهُ قَلِيلًا Whoever disbelieves in this message, Allah says, in the revelation, in this way of life, Allah will give him two. But guess what? It's called Qalil. Have you imagined? Have you imagined all these people who are not Muslims in this in this area, in the Silicon Valley? Don't go too far. They are not Muslim. They are even atheists. They are even some of the other things. But they're rich. They are super rich. You know them all. They own all these social medias and all that. You always wonder. Wait a second, how come they are so rich? Why am I a believer? I'm driving an Uber, but this guy, or I don't have a job, I don't have a job. And these guys are so rich, they don't even know what to do. They don't even know what to do. They just punch somebody on a, on, a, uh, on a football field, or they show their shirt or something, and they get fined for $13,000. Like, ah, eh, whatever, it's like a couple of pennies for me. They don't care. They don't care. And here's the evidence. Here's what Allah says. Allah is, Allah is a Rahman on this earth, and he's going to give, and that's what he did. He's giving. But guess what he says? Those who do not believe, kafara, don't, don't believe in this, once, once they get all this awesomeness from Allah, and if they don't show appreciation, and if they don't change their way of life, and that's how they depart from this world, they are gone. By the way, it's not for you and I to judge. It's only up to Allah. Allah is going to say what? Summa. Their consequences, their place of rest is this horrific place. This horrific place. It's called Adab nar this horrific fire. And Allah says, Bi'is al Masir, it's, it's not a fun place. Bi'is al Masir is just really, really horrific. It's something that you don't want to even, even think about. Forget about being in there. So, got that? So, imagine that. So, keep this in mind. This dua. And we're going to make a connection between this law, the sira, and all the other things. Now, Rabbi Muhammad Islam goes on a, on, on a mission to fulfill the, the ask of Allah that. He builds a Kaaba with his son. Um, this dua is really, this dua is really amazing to me. You know why it's amazing to me? Rabbana taqabal minna inna kanta alim. When you and I do something, something good, at place of work or at home, someone is asking us to do something. Let's say um, your manager asks you to do something and you do really well, or, or your dad asks something to do and you do really well, and you do the really well, a good job. Guess what happens? You come here like, I did that. Basa, look what I did. I did it. It was me. You show a moment of pride. You show like this satisfaction. You show this like, mm, it was me. Imagine him and his son built the Kaaba. It's, it's not a small task. It's not a small task at all. And it's a big thing. It's until today, that's what billions of people look towards and they do prayer. It's not a small thing. He didn't pump his chest. That was me. He humbled himself really, really well. And guess what he asked? Ya Allah, you asked me to do this. But my son, I did it. It's possible that I couldn't do exactly what you're asking for. It is quite possible that I could not fulfill your, your need the way you want it. But guess what? Ya Allah, please accept this. Rabbana taqabal minna inna kanta samilali. From both of us, please accept what we have done. Because you are two qualities you can, you're, you're, you can hear and you're uh, the most knowledgeable. There's many, many, many things to be said in there. It's really amazing. Then he goes on. And he says something else. Now that I built this, this house in the middle of the desert, there's nothing else going on here. Ya Allah, do something else. 
Remember the dua that he said, uh, Allah said the, his promise is not going to go to the wrong, wrongdoers. And he's, he's really worried. He's really worried that his progeny, someone is going to be a wrongdoer. And he is immediately asking for one thing. He's like, Ya Allah, we just finished the building of Kaaba, myself and my son. Can you please help us out, guarantee that we are going to be in full submission to you, we are going to be Muslims. How do I understand that from the, from the beginning? Rabbana waj'alna muslimayn lak. Muslimayn is dual. Me and my son, we want to be Muslims to you. We want to be submitting to you. Please, ya Allah, accept this from us. So he's incredibly worried about himself and his son, right? Because Allah said his promise is not going to be the wrongdoers, right? And then he says, وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكْ and from my progeny, please bring a ummah, um, people who are going to be believe in you, believers in you, from my progeny. He's making that dua. Guess who is that dua? You. Because of his dua, you're sitting here and believing in him and believing in this message, believing in Allah. It's because of that. This is the dua that he made. Some years ago. So here's my joke. I think I did this joke on a, on a, on a khutbah one time. I don't know if it went really well. I may have given about a little talk about this uh, khutbah some years ago. I said, guys, brothers, I was, I was addressing brothers. <laughs> I said, brothers, when you stand there and you, you make your dua and you feel like you never wake up on time in Fajr, but this one time you woke up on Fajr and you made dua and he's like, God, I made this dua, nothing happened. Uh, I don't know what's up. When I click on Amazon two hours later, I get my stuff, but I made dua, ya Allah, it's been a day, I don't know what happened. I don't know if the dua got accepted or not. So my joke was, brothers, take 10,000 10, years to get your duas accepted because Ibrahim made 10,000 years ago dua, now got accepted, so hey, so, no rush. Don't rush. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if we're comfortable or not. So, that's what he does. He's asking for a generation to be Muslim just like you. Right here. You're sitting because of the dua. And then he's asking, I don't know, and then when this generation comes, which is the coming of the Prophet ﷺ and Muslims, and show them how the rituals of Hajj takes place. Right? Rituals of Hajj. And that's what he's asking, and that's what he's getting. Okay. And then he's asking something else. And he's asking, when the time comes for the guidance, Rabbana wa ba'athum fihim rasulam Someone, a messenger from them. The messenger understands the needs, understands the and understands the culture, everything. Send a messenger. Yatlu alayhim ayatik. About this ayat. This, this incredible revelation. That other thing is going to do, الكتاب, and the messenger is going to teach the law. Kitab is book, a law, regulations, sharia, all that is going to be taught. What else is going to do? Well, hikmah, wisdom. Wisdom is experiential um, learning. Those of us, we, we, all, we always talk about those of us, our elders, parents, they are, they have a ton of wisdom. The wisdom doesn't come from a university degree. It comes from living the life. As we, we ought to listen and learn from them. It's, it's, it's incumbent on all of us to learn from their wisdom. And that's what he's asking uh, from this prophet to do. We use that key him. And then he's going to purify. So these are the four things that he's asking for this prophet to do. Send a prophet from them, among them. Guess who is the prophet? Because of this dua, the Prophet came. Because of this dua, you and I are living here again. Yuzakihim is, is tazkiyah is really important to also note. Tazkiyah means the purification of the heart, the purification of the mind, all of that is included in this, in this dua. Okay, so let's have the, uh, let's do the fun part. Remember this? This dua, that is ask for security. Four people. Guess where you see the evidence of this security? How many of you remember the surah? You remember it? Very good. Very nice. 
So the last 10 surahs of the Quran, starting from 105 all the way to 114, some shape or form it has it has a connection with this dua, the dua that's on the left side that you see. It has a connection with, with the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam, some way or form, some shape or form. The stira has some connection with this dua. So the first one he said, give him security. Guess what happened? At some point, some madman came and said, I'm going to destroy this Kaaba. And he marched from thousands of miles away with elephants. Arabs never ever seen elephants before. That was the first time they've actually seen elephants. What did, what did the people do? They left the town because this army was so strong, they didn't have anything else. They left the town and like, this house has a god. This god is going to protect this house. We cannot do this. And they left. And guess what happened? That's what this surah is. Allah saying, yes, I protected the house. I protected the house with, with, with Ababil, with little birds, a little bird with little pebbles. When, when uh, Ibrahim salam asked for protection, Allah delivered. How many years ago? Later? How many years is it going to take for your dua? 10,000 years. That's how long it took. The other part of the dua, وَرْزُقَلْهُ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ Give him peace, security, right? And provision, and sustenance. That's where this comes from. The next surah. I'm glad you know it. You know what Quraysh did? When it, when it came to commerce, when it came to trade, the, the people, every single tribe at that time, every single one except the tribe of Quraysh, they had an option only to pick one option, to go either this way, north or south. They just couldn't do it all the time around the air. They had to plan it out really well because of the there was bandits and there's not security and all that stuff, except Quraysh. Allah provided for them. That's what it says. Winter, summer, doesn't matter. You go north, you go south, you go anywhere you want to do trade, you're safe. No one is going to touch you. And no one did. Follow the history, follow the seerah. No one touched Quraysh. They could freely go and do the trade anywhere they could. None of the other tribes were touched. But any other tribe, it wasn't true. Allah promised. You remember Allah said, there are some people going to be worthy of this message and some people not going to be worthy of the message? Well, if that's the case, then who is not worthy of the message? And that's what the next surah is talking about. These are the people, they're really miserly people. These are the people, they are not, they're just, they're so... Um, what, what do you call that? Um, bakhil. Who understands Farsi? Stingy. Stingy. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. They're so stingy, these people. And Allah talks about them in this surah. Because these are among the wrongdoers. They just, they're too uptight. They just don't want to spend anything about anything, about anything at all. Even an orphan comes, they push him around. Even... Um, um, uh, what else is there? Miskeen. They, they don't care about anyone. These are the kind of people. Well, if that's the kind, if they're not worthy, then who is the worthy? You can, imagine, you can, you can ask, well, if that, that's the kind of people there, who is the worthy of this dua? And that's the, that's the ayah that, uh, um, the dua that he made. He, remember he asked for his progeny, someone from his progeny, and then someone to be a prophet among them. And guess what that next surah is? The next surah after the dua. Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. That's this, the surah. Allah says, O Prophet of God, I have given you so much. Kawthar has been one of the translations is that it's, it's a, it's a um, place in heaven where the water is and Prophet ﷺ will give water. That's true. But kawthar also means... Um, so much, so much in everything you can imagine, in everything that Prophet ﷺ got, it's that. What are you supposed to do then when you get? Fasalli li rabbika on her. In the previous ayah, in the previous surah, Allah says, when you have the safety and the provision, then you do fasalli li rabbika on her. You pray to the Lord of the Kaaba. That's what Allah asks. And here Allah says, 
تصلي then pray when you have so much amazingness at your disposal and we do and we are think think about all the things that Allah has given you all the things that we have at home in our life fasalli pray to show thankfulness and there's the the, uh, the story goes um the story goes that one of the family members of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was making fun of him especially when he lost his child and then he went ahead and he went out on a, on a market and start celebrating and he said this word after kept on saying oh muhammad is cut off sallallahu alaihi wasallam he didn't say sallallahu alaihi wasallam is cut off because in arab culture if you have a son then your progeny continues your name continues right but if you don't have a son then nothing it stops that's what he that's what he was that's what he believed and allah says no inna shani'aka huwa after your your enemy is the one who's going to be cut off not you don't worry about it he's giving him a guarantee okay among the among the people who are not worthy the next surah is also connected to the dua and also connected to the sira how is this connected where is our attachment where is our um there are too many farsi words are coming in my head doesn't come in uh, the english ones i don't know where do you put your uh, um allegiance most of us do with if we are afghani we stick with afghanis if we are bengali we stick with our bengalis if we are desis we stick with our own desi with our own kind we do this we did in the masjid we did outside we'll go eating that's what we do even if you do see something wrong we're just going to brush it under the the rug and it's like that's that's okay you know it's just our kind allah says that's not how it works go to these people to your people to quraish and denounce your citizenship look at them in the eye straight and say you know what you are al kafir you are the disbeliever i have nothing to do with you i have nothing to do with you this is it this is the cut off point for between us and that's what this surah is all about qul say ya ayyuhal kafirun oh disbelievers i mean prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam imagine this this is in makkah time during makkah what do you think the the strength and the power of muslims were in makkah there they were only in hundreds a few 100 150 or something maybe more or less they were not the prime ministers they were not the uh, statesmen they were not the wealthiest they were not the powerful they were not none of them were and if someone speaks like this guess what's going to happen they're going to get crushed yet prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was told to do so and he did it he went there right in front of these these um um makan uh, leadership and said you're all kafir i have nothing to do with you here's my i'm 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 giving up my citizenship with you that i'm qureshi you're qureshi does it mean i'm going to protect you that's not how it's going to work then allah allah promised them a victory allah promised them a victory and that's the next surah اذا جاء نصر الله والفتح this humongous victory this gigantic victory is going to come to you allah is making that promise for him and for the for the muslims there's a bunch of stories attached to this one as well but before you make the large victory showing that allah is saying let me show you a small piece of victory a small small piece of victory for you you know the one who is bothering you all the time o prophet of god I'm going to take care of him for you. By the way, his missus is giving you a hard time. I'm going to take his missus too. Take care of both of them. This is about Abu Lahab and his wife. Tabbat yada Abi Lahab wa Tab. That's this is about those two. Both of them were the staunchest enemy to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah is going to Allah is saying that before the large victory which was the Fath of Makkah, the conquer conquest of Makkah and the expansion of the Muslim all over the world taking over the roman empires and persian empires and all that stuff later on before all this victory allah says i'm going to give you a small piece of victory that has been that has been bugging you for so long and that's this is it now after all these struggles you can imagine there's so many struggles right so many struggles just going on we lose the sight of why are we struggling for what are we struggling for what what is this for and Allah wants to put us all together back to one concept which is the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam which is what 
Ibrahim alayhi salam fought from the very young age. One of you mentioned here that he was fighting idol worshippers from young age. From a very young age until until all his last breath, he was doing one thing, which is Tawheed, which is the Wahdaniyat, which is the oneness of God, right? That was his thing. That was his entire mission. That was his entire legacy. Allah wants to put us back to that, saying, this is it. This is this is what you're struggling for. Qul wallahu ahad. Say, Allah is one. Not just one, ahad. There's a big difference between ahad and wahid. If you understand Arabic. Why Allah chose ahad, not wahid? Or any other one, any other word for, for one? Because there's no ego. There's no second. Ahad means this is it, the only kind. There's no second. Talk about this when Allah, Allah says this. Now, if you wanted to go in this route and say you want to go back to what Ibrahim salam started, that legacy, you want to revive that legacy, there are distractions. There are two distractions, two, two forces of distraction. Allah says he's going to take care of those both. One from the outside and one from the inside. That's the other two surahs. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِ النَّاسِ These are the two that come on your way of prevent, prevent you from knowing who Allah is and knowing how to worship Allah. And these two are given to you and I as protection. Okay. I spoke all the things. You guys didn't speak. Um, talk. Ask. Questions. I don't know everything, but there are others who know. This is the ending, right? Allah says, uh, you are in a religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam. You are in a legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So follow what he did. By the way, uh, here's, a, here's a quiz for you. Some of the answers were already here. All the things that we do, um, the uh, Rahim said, the Panjimnai Muslimani, what is that called? Panjimnai Muslim, the five um, five pillars, thank you, of Islam, right? Those five pillars, all those five go to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Can you imagine? Can you count? Can you give examples how? I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you the easy one. I'm gonna answer the easy one. Do you think Hajj? Do you think Hajj goes? Oh yeah, Tawheed, exactly. We just talked about. It. Do you think Hajj goes to Ibrahim alayhi salam? Everything that we do in Hajj is, is just exactly what what he taught us and what he did. Tawheed, the sister says, the Tawheed, which is the oneness of God, which is getting rid of the worshiping of idol and all that, it goes directly to Ibrahim alayhi salam. That's why Allah says, "What tabi'u, millat Ibrahim Hanifa." He was Hanif. He was incredible. And follow that. If we want to follow this, we have to understand this. So the two are taken care of. The first one and the second one. Tawheed and Hajj. What about the other ones? Prayer is all that because we <laughs> just asked. Allah said, if that you asked me to build this house, I did. Please make this place of prayer for them. And Allah says, what uh, um, take a place of the Ibrahim alayhi salam. Right? Take a place of prayer for uh, Maqam Ibrahim. So you know that. What about the other two? The other two? Fasting and zakah. That's your homework. Every single thing goes to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Every single one of them. Clearly, through the Quranic evidences. Okay, uh, you, you, guys, you guys say something. Discuss something. What time is it? Oh, plain time. Any thoughts? Questions? Make sense? Does that make sense? Beneficial? Kinda? The reason I'm asking is this, that um, we, can, uh, we can improve all these. We can make these better. Yes, sister? Yes.
Right, we are from uh, we are from the progeny of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Yes, there were prophets before that. You're right; they all taught the same thing. But uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, we come from that side. So that's why Allah says, "You are in the religion of Ibrahim and follow follow his ways." Say it again. Sorry. No, our religion. Our religion from Ismail alayhi salam, right? Ibrahim had two sons, the father of two nations. It's usually called the father of two nations. One of them is the Ishaq alayhi salam, that, and for us is the other way, the Ibrahim, uh, Ismail alayhi salam, followers of that. If that makes sense. Yes, make suggestions if, um, to make these programs better and you want to hear more of these things, obviously ask the MCC to, uh, to provide these programs. I like, um, I like talking about the Ayat of Quran, just a few here, there for us. Um, there's, a, there's a ton, there's a ton that um, impacts our life. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> uh, sister, uh, sister Humaira is going to do the rest. Yeah, there are there are many du'as. This du'a, the reason uh, I wanted to show this because there's a connection to the seerah and there's a connection to the last 10 surahs of, of the thing that we read in our prayers all the time. If we make that connection, then we can concentrate a little bit more in the prayer and what we, what we see and what we read. It's like, ah, that, that's how you connect with Quran. It's not an abstract thing. You have to understand it. Oh, no. Um, <clears throat> uh, one of the things that I wanted to do, uh, I did the uh, thing last week. The conversation between... Um, the arrogance of Iblis to, to Allah. But there's a second part. It is just too good. But it's not for kids. It's not for kids. It's got to be 13 years and up. It's something that we don't talk about. We have to talk about it. We have to talk about it. Not, not I'm not talking about just a community. And I, I don't even hear that part of the discussion being made anywhere. Um, and it's it's a it's a shame. It's incredibly important. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so. No questions. No comments. You're all good. Yes. Oh, um, anybody know the, the, the deep meaning between the, behind Hanif? I have a written, I have written a detailed explanation of what Hanif is. Hanif is someone really gentle, someone really humble, someone really incredibly nice and friendly, and someone who accepts things immediately, and someone doesn't show any whatsoever, arrogance whatsoever. And these are all the qualities that Ibrahim alayhi salam showed. And I have actually a linguistic, um, uh, I, have to, I should have to look it up, find it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing word to describe. Usually, you're right, it's usually surrounding Ibrahim alayhi salam. Yeah. That's huge. That's huge, yeah. Anybody has any answer to that? 
Yeah, humbleness doesn't mean that you let people walk over you. Humbleness doesn't mean that you let allow people to take your rights. Humbleness comes as a as a point of strength. It comes as a part of as a as an authority. That's what it means that you have so much authority that you have so much um, power, but you don't abuse it. You don't. You just you just are thankful for what you have and you put it in a good use. In our culture, so what we understand is what we take it from our cultural thing, and that's um, our religion from culture. That's that's the absolutely atrocity to to the religion and to the way we live and lives and all that. That's not what it, that's not what it means. Especially when it comes to women's rights, especially when it comes to the voices, especially when it comes to uh, speaking up. That's not that if someone speaks up for his or her rights. It doesn't mean that you're being arrogant. No. At the same time, you don't allow to be abused. Verbal abuse. Forget about physical, physical abuse. It's just a completely different ballgame. That's not what it is. At the same time, if someone is being so arrogant and argumentative, that's what that was a quality of shaitan we discussed last week. Someone wants to argue all the time. Someone says that I am always right. That's what shaitan did. I'm always right. And I want to debate with you until I put you down, until rightfully or wrongfully, until I come on top. That's not humbleness. We have to be, there's a fine balance and there has to be a uh, um, place of respect and place of speaking out beautifully, in a beautiful word. What Allah says, وَقُولُ um, قَوْلًا Speak beautiful, clear words. Um, <clears throat> and we have taken, culturally, we have taken it in a really wrong way that when it comes to an adult, when it comes to a teacher, when it comes to someone else, that we're supposed to stand like this, can't even look into your eye to eye, and I'm just, whatever they say, it goes. That's not how it is. As far as we have, if we have a knowledge, yeah, if we don't have any knowledge, you take it. If you have a knowledge and you have a, a point of discussion that is not, making sense, ask question respectfully for, for, to gain the knowledge. Not being a, um, in a mode of uh, argumentative and trying to debate every point. There are those who they want to debate every single thing. And that's not, that's not how it works. Does that make sense to you all? Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> right. That's exactly right. Exactly right. And we have a we have a completely misunderstanding of things. Um, understanding to me is say this. <clears throat> People quote hadith a lot. Understanding hadith is so difficult. It is so difficult. And why is it so difficult? The books of the hadith that you know, let me name one, Bukhari or Muslim or some of the books. These books were written for the scholars. They were not written for you and I. It doesn't mean you and I cannot read it, but that means you and I will have to read with someone who understands it, or with a teacher. You and I reading it and reading the translation, we will not get what the context. So every hadith has a context behind it, a story behind it. We have to know what the context behind it is. Without knowing the context behind it, we will get the wrong answer immediately, and we act upon it immediately. And that happens a lot. People quote hadiths, oh, Prophet Ali Salaf said this and this. That's true, said it, but why did he say that? What was the, what was the thing behind it? Let me, let, me, uh, let me say one thing. There was a hadith that was read about woman and why women going to be punished so have this, uh, severely. And it was just quoted just like that. And it was just read just like that. And all men are like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and women are like, what just happened? What does this mean? It sound, made it sound like it's women are second class citizens only and their rights are very limited and just that. that. That's not what it is at all. There's a huge context, context behind this, this hadith, why it happened and how it happened and why the Prophet said that particular one. Thank you. 
without without knowing that we make an enemy of half of our species immediately. And that's that's how you see the rise of all these. I mean, I mean, I, if I was if I was a female and I heard that hadith, I'll be offended, and I'm going to take stance too. I'm like, what is this? What's going on here? Why would anyone say this to me? So that's that's a that's a huge gap. It's a huge gap for us. We got to understand the 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 thing behind it and read it with a with a scholar. This is good. When I talk, usually I put people to sleep. Alhamdulillah, I've seen quite a few of you almost, almost to that rim, stage three. So, yes, sir. No, I'm just joking around. So, some years ago, thousands of years ago, thousands of years ago. Um, I don't know if it was 10, I read it somewhere in one of the books at 10,000. I don't know if it's 10,000 is true or not, but this is thousands of years ago. No, I don't know the chronology. No, I, I'm not, not me to say da 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 Ibrahim <laughs> uh, the, the, the side of the Ibrahim and and then the, the rest of the prophets for the Arabs to the Prophet is very little known. There's only a few, four or five or something. That's about it. On the other side, there are thousands, literally thousands. On his hawk side. Oh, I um, so there's so much to say. Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, from very young age, he was. You know what I love about him? He would use his head. He would use his head. That means he would use his intellect and think, and logically he'd say, makes no sense. Why would you do this? It makes no sense. He was a young kid. I don't know what age, five, six, seven, or something, whatever he was. Um, some people say, some scholars say his dad, some scholars say his, his uncle was carving idols and it's like, take these idols and sell it to the market. Take, take it to the market, so be sold. And he never understood. He never understood what, what this is. And he's like, kept on talking to, let's say, dad. It makes no sense. Why would you do this? So I said, dad, dad is saying something. He has to do it. So one day he puts a, it, the dad carves a really nice and expensive one. And he gives him a ticket to the market. He throws a rope around the neck and he just drags it like a dog on the streets to the market. Dad was so upset. He was so upset. You dis dis disrespecting the thing that we do and you damaged my thing. And like, like dad, it's just like, listen. It didn't hurt him. He didn't cry. He didn't see anything. He just, what? Then later on when people are worshiping uh, um, stars and suns and he's, he went there and, and he prayed with a logic played their own game against their against them, against their logic. Um, or the one that he broke the idols, which was amazing. He broke all the idols. He didn't go to the didn't go to the picnic. He broke all of them and he put the axe on the largest one. And the Quran says, came and asked him, Yeah Ibrahim, did you do this? He's like, what do you mean I did I did look at this guy has an axe on his shoulder. Maybe we should ask him. Maybe he is the one who is again playing with the logic. And they're like, what are you talking about? This is a stone. He cannot talk. It's like, ah, oh, stone cannot talk. So why do you worship as something that doesn't talk? What's the point of that? He's playing with the logic constantly, right? Yeah. Uh, Allah is telling you. Allah is saying clearly, why aren't you contemplating about the Quran? That means, why are you reading blindly? Why are you taking things blindly? Why aren't you thinking about it? Why aren't you using your intellect? Allah says over and over and over again in the Quran, you and I are required, absolutely required to think about the Quran, what we read. Things like this, this is my, this is my attempt for us to use our head and think and make the connections between the different parts of the Qur'an. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the uh, cultural things for us is um, 
especially in this day and age, we want things immediate, fast response, right? Fast response, everything. This has, this has really ruined our life. Everything is instant. And we take that concept, we say, oh, animus, go to understand Quran. And we approach it a week later, we're like, oh, this is too much. This is way too much. I can't get it. Um, Allah is not asking you and I to be scholars. Allah is asking you and I to know enough that we can run our lives, that we understand it and we can actually enjoy it. You know, just imagine, um, Madam, uh, um, Madam uh, President, one of the things we got to do is the meaning of the, meaning of the uh, prayer in detail. When we pray, what do we do? What do we say? And what, what is it that we say? And why do we say it? I can guarantee that if you think about that and just get that down, you will be in love when you're praying. You will love to pray. I mean, literally, you will look forward to it time. That you know what you're saying is like, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying to the creator of the world. I'm saying this. Even you say the same thing over and over again, you are looking forward to it. The reason I'm mentioning these last 10 to give you some flavor of what they are because we read these in our prayers, then you are thinking about, this is what I just heard. This is what I just said to God. It makes it real. It makes the conversation real. All right. Thank you so much for entertaining me. Chocolate. Anybody wants it? Keep us in your du'as, inshallah.